welcome to my business pharmacy. Um, thank you, Del, by the way, for letting me do this. I was reflecting on how appreciative I am to be connecting with this community every single Wednesday at 12 o'clock. And... week's episode of the business pharmacy we're going to be talking about the first year of business and talking to someone hello everyone it's so nice to see you firsthand what it's been like starting up a business in lockdown 2020 you know so what you know a year on and for anyone who hasn't started a business you know always always hearing what other people did when they started and then quite realizing you still haven't done it it's actually quite a good thing to watch. What are the lessons that have been learned? What's the legacy of building a business built in COVID time? You know, is it going to be different to building a business in COVID time and the longevity that you might see of that company compared to others? Um, and as I just said in my stories, if you know anyone who has started a business um, and who uh, had launched it in COVID times, please ask them to come and join this because I think that they will get so much from this community. Um, if we think back to this all, you know, I have such a vivid recollection of this time um, last year and I actually can't believe, do you all feel the same? It's like time has slowed down and sped up all in the same breath. You know, it's about basically this sort of sense of fear that we had, you know, everything was so seeped in fear. Um, and I remember dropping off care packages. I'm sure you all did the same. And do you remember the news about the length of queues at supermarkets and um, thinking about, you know, how uncertain the time was? And I remember my mum at Easter, you know, I was dropping off like Easter eggs and she was saying, don't be silly. This is all going to be finished by Easter. This is last year. It was absolutely a moment in time. And I really remember feeling for everyone out there, all small businesses having to make huge decisions. She, you know, should we furlough our staff? Shouldn't we furlough our staff? Um, how were we going to actually support one another? Should we promote ourselves in a pandemic? You know, these things are almost unreal right now to think about it, 365 days on, but it is a year on and we are going to reflect on it. Now, remember, ask away all questions, whatever, just ask away. If you need to ask me something, ask it right here. Um, it's an amazing thing that we are here a year on. So if you started a business in the last year during lockdown, you are firstly not alone. And um, this is a great stat for all of us to know. 100,000 more businesses were created last year compared to 2021. Um, so in 2020, it means that basically 2,000, maths not complicated here, 2,153 businesses started every single day. Can you believe that? It is just fantastic. And 2021, as predicted um, last year, is set to be the biggest growth in businesses um, ever created on record. And I, I knew that this was going to happen because we know that so many people have had to, by necessity, start something. And in a recent survey, a huge 65% of the UK, think of this, 65% of all employees wanted to start their own businesses. So these are the people who haven't started their businesses. 65% of them want to jump ship. Um, so isn't that incredible? And how lucky are we to be doing it? So last year, um, you know, it is an amazing thing. This entire experience, we're going to look back at it and I hope we're going to look back at it. And this is not another false start. But, you know, if you have built a business in this time, my goodness, you know, the, the lessons that we learn in the first year are pretty phenomenal. But the lessons that we learn in COVID um, is just another other something else, you know, a pandemic. Talk about a difficult start to a company. And interestingly, another statistic, yeah, I do love a good sexy stat. That's what I'm calling them. Sexy stats, because they just hone in, don't they, on what's happening. 47% of women feel that they disproportionately have been impacted by the pandemic. Um, and they, 47% worry that they're going to have to close their businesses in 2021. 
This is an incredible number, you know, compared to 35% of men. So instantly, for whatever reason, could it be that we can't juggle what we're having to deal with at home and business? Could it be that, uh, God knows what, but that is the statistic. And yet I passionately believe on the flip side of that, that if you have had to survive, if you are surviving, if you have started, the business muscle that you've had to work in the pandemic is like nothing else. You know, you don't get trained for this. You cannot go to a training course and know how to deal with the pandemic in business. That actually got me thinking about how come this big businesses didn't predict this in terms of, you know, you know, you would want to think that like our governments, like big businesses, that they might have had to think to themselves, what happens if, for instance, X, Y, and Z? It's contingency planning, isn't it? I don't quite understand that. I sort of get it for us small businesses. And now, by the way, we can't unknow what we know, can we? We will be prepared if we are, as some said, unfortunately in a pandemic era, we're now no, going to know what to do. But I sort of don't understand why governments and um, uh, our health services and our uh, infrastructure and the bigger businesses hadn't thought about this first. Um, let's look at some of the comments coming through from this gorgeous community that I get to see every single week. Felt creative, my favourite part of the week. Thank you, my favourite part of the week as well. And do you think about this last year? Actually, I did it daily for a while, didn't I, with SME SOS. But I get to do this every week with you. And I am so appreciative to Dow. I'm so appreciative to this community that we get to do this every single week. We get to connect and grow together. And long may that continue. Annie Salone Home. Hello. Hi, Annie Salone Home. Lovely to see you. Was flicking through your magazine, The Colourist, the other day. And Oh, gosh, it's beautiful. Swim, swim, swimwear. What, um, that was the biggest worry for, for us. Should we promote ourselves during the pandemic? Uh, swim, swim, swimwear. Love the name. And you were not alone because I think the majority, I'd say 90%, including myself, did think, is this appropriate? Um, from the oak tree, I remember listening to you whilst I was on a walk about promoting myself and thought, gosh, I should stand back. Then we realised people wanted to support us and we all pivoted again. It's been intense and the best year on record for us. You have been so amazing. I've got to say um, from the Oak Tree, this has been a record year or the past year has been a record year for many businesses. It's going to be that interesting thing about what you do now you have scaled. Is that scale going to sustain and, and continue? What do you do? How do you maintain that interest that we got from a lot of people supporting small businesses, a lot of people wanting to send care packages, all those sorts of things. But we did gain all those customers. So now you've got those customers. It's about working out what we do with them. Uh, Nomad Wine UK, we are a COVID business. Congratulations. And your help and support, Holly, has been so helpful. Absolutely. Here always. Uh, Richmond Cake School. Hi, Danielle. Uh, most transformer, transformer, no, sorry, Danielle, can't speak actually. Um, transformative, I'm going to say. It's the same word year for me during COVID. It took a crisis to sharpen my focus. Sometimes it always does. You know, I've just been doing a lovely um, live um, uh, a speech thing and it was incredible. And one of the things I did speak about was exactly that, how this year is um, a, a year that you really couldn't uh, do things that weren't working. You really or you were so intensely busy, you didn't have the time to be wasting on things that didn't move the dial. Um, and I always say don't it doesn't move the ship further um, or you weren't and it was crisis. You know, you had everything resting on this. Now, it's not to say you don't normally, but this took it to another level, didn't it? And it made you sharpen your focus. It made you let go with love the things that weren't working and potentially pluck up the courage, that bravery to go and learn the things that you didn't know. Um, in order to save your business. You know, us women are amazing when we're mother lions. You know, that instinct of protection, saving our company, 
You know, don't mess with a female founder. Don't mess with the mummy of their business. Hand and Hive Co. Holly, I've just discovered you and you're so blooming inspiring. Well, what a lovely thing to say. And Hand and Hive Co., you have just joined the best community ever. Kush, Kushy Knit, my first time turn, tuning in. So hello. Well, hello to you. Welcome to the community. And Honey on the Hill Froom, I questioned whether to launch, but I literally had to do it for all the livelihoods connected to my business. And that's what I'm saying when it comes down to the the nuts and bolts of this. So many people, we didn't have a choice whether to start. We didn't have a choice whether to pivot. Um, so do you know, a, a few facts, as you know, I like a good sexy stat. Um, more than 17,500 chain stores and un other venues closed in Great Britain last year. And another simple piece of math, that's 48 closures a day. But the interesting thing about this, when they've actually looked into this, and I'm not saying it wasn't accelerated, do not get me wrong, but what they're finding is that trend was starting prior to COVID, right? So that was starting before. And so it's going to be really interesting when we have the brainiacs of the world looking in at this period of time and trying to dissect what was COVID related and what was accelerated. So you can think about this. So another that's a negative acceleration a positive a positive acceleration would be working from home i think covid has accelerated things that were already happening it's going to accelerate the dinosaurs and the 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 things blocking our high streets off the high street it's made that female um and um, all flexible working but actually women working from home around their families has been accelerated and potentially the, this closure thing that we're listening to when it was hospitality and leisure venues um and that's what i'm talking about these 48 closures that was happening already so it's going to be really fascinating in good news, though, about our high street in Scotland from the 5th of April, we've got garden centres and hairdressers being open. So for all of you in Scotland, I'm absolutely thrilled. And I'm actually now going to be speaking to a woman who knows about the high street because I'm going to be speaking to someone who has launched on the high street in the pandemic. And she has a lot to say about it. But let's just go back to what we're talking about. And remember, ask me questions and I am so happy to answer them. Invite people along who are just starting up. You know, they don't have to have just started this year. Invite people along. Let's build this community because ultimately the thing that I get fed back all the time is that, yes, I am helping. But you are helping your community as much as I am. Holly and Co., it's what the whole vision for this company was. Holly and this community together and only together do we help other people. So if you know right now someone, all you've got to do right now is comment and tag them in and they will be notified that I'm on at the moment. So let's just think about recognising this milestone, you know, your business birthday. And by the way, I think you should celebrate your business birthday. If you have not got it in your diary, get it in your diary. It is an absolute, an absolute necessity to celebrate 365 days surviving. Um, and if you don't do it, no one's going to do it. So I want you to do that. Um, but you should basically feel incredibly proud starting or continue to survive in this period of time. And I know many of you have, and I know how difficult it has been. You know, it's testament, isn't it, to the human spirit of a founder. The Duracell battery, it's the tenacity that we have. It's the not accepting. Fine, you can throw me, you know, um, late payments. You can throw me my manufacturer copying me. You can throw me my first member of staff copying my ideas. You can throw me um, my, my family member getting sick and I'm still surviving this. You can throw me a pandemic and I will survive. And that is because of the energy that founders have. And that is something I know to be true. And so many of you have had to survive or you've had to start a business because there wasn't a choice. You were furloughed, you were made redundant. Some of you had a realization that you absolutely hated what you did and that life was short and that you wanted to start. So I really, really want to talk to people here firsthand about this experience. 
Um, and um, and let's just answer a couple of questions and um, comments before we go on to my amazing guest, which I have been salivating over her Instagram um, since yeah since the beginning of lockdown. And what a brand she's built, Susie um, Bidle Lake. This year was the one to kick start me to launch my own business alongside my full-time job rather than batten down the hatches when redundancy threatened um i decided to embrace the fear and act i love this word take action everything that you do just take action do not stand still do not be dormant do not be scared don't be insecure so susie bidlake i am super proud of you uh, happy baby yoga and um, massage. It's definitely given me the push I've needed to get my business off the ground. Uh, Alana loves, love this community. I've started a business as others are doing, making the same or similar products to me. So not sure if it's worth starting a business. OK, I understand what you're saying here. Um, I, go to my stories today, by the way. There's this, this, this little rant I did because I found my uh, sash for when I got married and the, the my lovely hens made me a sash um, for my hen do. And I, I recount there a story of when I was asked on a radio show, oh, but Holly, you know, surely there's not many more businesses to start. You know, and I was talking about a jewellery company. And I literally told him, are you joking me? There is every single idea that's never been had still to have. And there's every single adaptation of my own creativity to make a necklace a different necklace, to bring emotion into product development, to take influence from all the incredible countries across this planet. And so um, Alana loves absolutely. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. You've got to stay ahead of your curve, stay ahead of your innovation. Um, and I would say do not worry at all about it, but have a USP. Do not copy anyone else. Have a USP. It's all about what your USP is. And on that, by the way, I was going to say someone mentioned to me something and what we're designing at Holly & Co., and actually, the more real, uh, Alana, you are to what you do, the more successful it will be. You know, our USP is actually ourselves. The fact that we have unique fingerprints, the fact that we have a unique way of thought, the fact we have a unique way of speaking, everything. And, and I talk about this in my book. Um, it's about literally looking at your business like a human body. It is so unique to you. So never, ever feel as long as you remember you cannot be vanilla and you cannot be the same. As long as you go and if you want to find your uniqueness, look within, look at yourself and know that actually people will love it. Uh, Weekend Candy started a hospitality um, business um, and um, uh, sorry, started a hospitality business just before COVID struck. Proud um, and still going. What a mountain to climb. hundred uh, percent. We got a question here. Um, OK. Mama Rules Limited, in a crazy time like this, what's the best way to forecast for the future? I'm in the mum and baby category. Right, this is a really interesting one. I'm actually going to be doing a session with a futurist about this very, very subject. Um, looking into the future, there is actually, if you, you, there are lots of resources out there, but there are um, quite a few that are out there that do cost quite a bit of money. So one of the things, and let me know, by the way, give me a thumbs up if this is a good thing. Would you like me to bring on a futurist? Um, not, I'm not saying regularly, but I'm just saying as part of the Holly & Co sort of team, give me the thumbs up and hearts if you would like me to bring one in. To think about the future, to think about our communities, to think about society, to think about what is working and who we should be targeting in the future. Um, I think that actually also the best way also to forecast is to look at the past. Now, I know we've had this sort of um, unique year, but if you have been in business for a while, up until COVID, there would have been a consistency 
of some sort. And it's about knowing your numbers, knowing what you've done and being able to look at those numbers. Don't go over the top with them. Look at them and create some common denominators. Hmm. I've grown 10% every year. I grew 15% that year. I grew 20% that year. I grew 8% there. But the average I've grown is 10%. Probably I can predict that I'm going to grow another 10% as long as I innovate at the same point in time. So I think that that is a great tip, by the way, to look at your past to try and predict what the future is. Tons of thumbs up, I'm seeing. So that means that we will be getting a futurist on here. Um, Cotswolds virtual market, remaining agile is key. I absolutely agree with that. Um, now let's get on to our guest here. So we have got Sophia, and Sophia is the founder, along with her partner, Jessie, of Sourdough Sophia. Um, and let's just get her on because we have got so many questions. And as I said, I have been salivating over her Instagram account. It is something quite unbelievable. Um, I think she's got over 90,000 followers. Um, and she's um, a year ago, which is just incredible. And what a year it has been for her. Um, so here she is. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know where I'm going. Yay, it worked. Yes, you're on. Sorry. It's so nice to see you. So nice to see you. Now, listen, I've just been telling everybody about you because you yeah. have had a phenomenal year, haven't you? Um, yeah. You've scaled a business. You started a business. You've had to probably learn every single business sort of Everything. lesson in, yeah. in, 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 in no time at all. You went into lockdown. We went into lockdown, um, and you have a young child. Why did you start to start to start baking loaves from your for your local community? God, I can't speak. I'm salivating. I don't worry. I got you. I got you. Um, so, to give you some background, my dad is a baker, so I've baked since I was a tiny girl, and I think deep down it's been something I wanted to do. And I never quite approached it. So I thought maybe my life is in marketing. So I tried that, quickly started yeah. a food blog, realized that's not happening either. I need to be with people, I need to serve them, I need them to, to actually eat the food and I need to see them eat the food and be happy with it. So come lockdown, um, I've been doing sourdough baking for obviously all my life. So I did courses, but come lockdown, I couldn't do any more courses. And my online shop was getting really dull for me. Like I wasn't enjoying it as much as I wanted. I wanted to be with people and I wanted to bring that food to them. So I said to Jesse, my husband, what should we do? And he says, why don't you try just baking for your neighbor? And I said, fine, I'll just do a bread and see what the response is. And um, the response was, I'm going to tell my other neighbor and that other neighbor had a WhatsApp group. And it turned out within a week, I had about 12 people at my door going, could you make me one too? Um, and, and basically it went from there. I quickly purchased a mixer, a fridge or something and converted my entire dining room that with a small baby still in, in tow. So oh because we were at home, goodness. we just went from there. And um, yeah, it went very, very quickly. And it showed me that this community needed something that they were missing. Someone yeah. real who's there for them, yeah. who understands real bread and who hasn't yet gone to the whole large manufacturing process, who is still a yeah. real person. And it's, and it's that, that's what sold it, I think. You know, I've just been speaking while we were just um, waiting for you. I was just talking about exactly that actually. And, and, yeah. and here we are, here's, here's um, Sophia actually saying exactly the same thing. You know, this is Sophia. This was always Sophia. Yeah, and always. actually, she's making bread. And some would say, well, other people make bread. We've had a few yeah. comments saying, you know, oh, I want to do a product. But, you know, the rest of the community, some of the community else are doing it. And what I'm saying is that but they won't do it like Sophia. You know, Sophia sourdough exactly. is Sophia's. And if I think right. about what you've said, and I've been reading your Instagram post, you know, you get up at 4.45 every day. You do a 12-hour day. Yep. You know, you, you have a young child. Um, yep. This is the passion, isn't it? This is what it takes to put your full self into something, yeah. isn't it? It's your yeah. full, passionate self. Only Sophia could do it. Tell me about that. So... And, and just to tell you also, we do have quite a lot of competition in just one high street. We have Gales, we have Duns, there's two really established, really good businesses. Yeah. But people believed in me. They supported my Kickstarter, they supported what I did because they yeah. knew 
it's someone who is just like them. Um, yes. And you know, we, we are mums, we, we want to do something and we want to be supported with that. There's a lot of mums in this community and they all understood what I was doing. And that's what, I think that's what drove it is the local community. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I would say I get up really early, I go to bed really late and I am always the first one in and the last one out. And that's the mentality I learned from my parents. They've had their own business for over 30 years. And it's, um, if you're not there, it's not you anymore. So if you're there, it's always going to be you who are, who's selling that business, basically. I'm constantly looking who's coming in, saying yeah. hi to my customers. I remember their names by now. I know who's coming. It's the personalized experience. You never give up on that one. That's what sells your business is the fact that you're so determined to make it happen and your passion will literally out, out drive anything else. Anyone out drive else anything you. else. Yeah, yeah it, I, just be, I just have been doing another talk and you know, the passion is your number one commodity yeah. and I can feel 100%. it coming off the screen from you. <laughs> you know, you say that community is important and you know, and I talk about it all the time, you know, the Holly and Co, Co one of the words that Co yes. stands for is community. Yeah. Tell me, do you think that your business has been built on a community? And I'm going to come to you in a later question about your Kickstarter campaign, but just talk to me about the basics of building community into your business. So for me, community was the heart of my business. It was yes. incredibly important from day one when I started my Instagram account, actually. From the first day where we were talking about uh, how we built this micro bakery from scratch, the only focus was to include everyone around us who may have a similar dream and talk to them about that and share everything. Yeah share all our passion, all of our success, and all of our failures, because you can only learn from failure. And it happens like that, it's normal. And um, I think that's what sort of, that, that was the base idea is that I want others to know how it is and to learn from me and from my mistakes as well, and to also have someone to talk to. And I think that's what inspired everyone around us. So it's not just the bread community, the people who are similar minded, who want to basically start a similar journey, but it's also then the local community who, yes. who realize there's someone who is taking this really seriously, who is actually focused on supporting other local businesses with their ingredients and, yeah. and want to try and actually encourage them as well to do well and not just go through all the big guns. We don't want to just yeah. go through all the big businesses. We want to support each other and that's the main point. So there's many communities involved. It's not just the bakers, it's the it's the um it's the suppliers, it's the local yeah. community, the purchase, you know, the the, the customers, it's everyone. Yeah. There's many, many communities that we basically try to knit together and encourage and to you know work what? together. And you did that as well, because one of the other things that I'm passionate about, and I'm interested to hear your point of view, and certainly what serves the community is our high street. Yeah. You know, and I mentioned earlier, you know, the stats of the high street, and they're looking pretty depressing. And, yeah. you know, but I utterly believe I would, uh, you cut my arm off and I sort of bleed independence. You know, I absolutely yeah. think that the future yeah. of the high street is this sort of hyper local experience yeah. potentially um, and why our sort of councils need to seriously have a complete new wave of um, people working for them but that's yeah. a whole other subject but you've taken your business you could have taken your business online you know you yeah. recently were talking to someone about um, the you know, I was recently talking to someone about the rise of these sort of dark kitchens and you know taking yeah. the humanness out of um, our high street food operators um but that's you know how soon did you know that you you wanted that physical space and i've got a physical space you know and i know yeah. it is alive it is yeah. one of the biggest things that eats up my time yeah. although it's one of the smallest parts of my business if you see what i mean it's yeah. it's it, it's you have to understand what you're doing when you take on a physical <laughs> space tell me about that and and that that reason that you wanted to go back to that tradition so I think you, what you see, well, what you've seen during lockdown is, uh, and that was the depressing part, is that so many businesses have had to shut. So the high street was getting a little bit sparse and it, it, it's really not so nice to see. And I think no. 
it was um, that was the lack of support we got. That's for sure. And um, and I think even if we are all really passionate, that, that's that's it. But I saw that there was one shop empty for about ten months, and I I had been eyeing it out, and I thought, mm, you know, it's the perfect street. I really like it, and but I might not be ready. I'll go into a, into an interim solution. So I went into a little storage unit and put my little bakery in there. We nearly had a fire, and that near fire made me decide I need to think bigger than this. I can't be, and I can't hide, I yes. can't hide away from people. I need to be in a retail space. I need to be on the high street yeah. and it's scary. I was scared of it first and I realized very quickly that that wasn't the right thing to do. You've got yeah. to jump in. You've got to be that moment where you're scared and go for it. And I have no idea. I had at the time I had no idea how to, yeah. do school, how to do it up, how to open it, how to employ staff, nothing absolutely nothing and I went straight for it I just jumped right in and I think that's it you sometimes you have to outweigh the risks of all the benefits you're going to gain and just jump for it and and that's I think and that's what I did basically I just I just went for it you I, yeah you did and and it always when anyone says something like that remembers reminds me of Saha Hashimi founder of Coffee Republic who yeah. says leap leap yeah. and the net will catch you yes. because that is the thing that we've just got to do you leapt and actually yeah. the community, your brand, your yeah. passion, all those things has actually, you know, caught you. Tell me, your space in lockdown is all you've ever actually known. Um, how do you think that the change of coming out of lockdown, out of the pandemic, what do you think is going to happen? Because a lot of this community, I know, if they're not even admitting it, there is nerves about this support for local, this support for small yeah. is great when you have time. But when life gets busy again, yeah. or do you, do you know what I mean? They're worried that they're in this bubble. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I, I see. It's really interesting you say that because uh, Jesse and I think about that every night. Every night we go, <laughs> so what's going to happen when we're opening everything again? Are we going to be less busy or more busy? Or how's it going to change? And I think it's just the next yeah. stage. It's just going to be the next stage. You are just going to have to once again reinvent yourself. And just once again, you're going to be challenged. It's a new challenge to accept, a new challenge to, to grow into. And it's a very normal thing that, you know, you can't ever get comfortable. That's business, isn't no. it? It's, it's never yeah. comfortable. And if it yeah. is, then you know it's time to change something. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I'm scared, but I'm also excited to see what's going to happen. I think yeah. it's definitely going to change, but probably for the better. You know what? It sounds like you have actually swallowed all hundred founders that are on my podcast because, you know, the amount of people saying, um, you know, the, Jake Humphreys, he says, you know, if, if you get comfortable, if, you, if you're if you sitting on the comfortable seat, get in the uncomfortable seat. Dude, you know, that yeah. is the most important thing that we can all do. The second we think the sun is shining and you're not planning for rain, you're in trouble. Yes. And that is just part of being a founder and an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now tell me, talking about rain and talking about money and things like that, I'm so interested to get to talk to you about this because money yeah. is one of those things that, you know, we try and hide away from, but actually it's the most essential thing. You know, cash yeah. is queen. Now you hit your target. Um, you launched a Kickstarter campaign and yeah. you hit your target of £25,000 in yep. nine days. Um, and now you're walk working on your stretch target. And by the way, community, I will be putting a link in for Sophia's stretch target link so that we can all support her. Um, and you want to raise the goal of to 35000 and you've got 2K to go. Um, I, I, did, I did already. I did already achieve it. It's already. Oh, it. Yeah, I did already achieve it. So the Kickstarter is already over. But I did, and like, I'm just going to tell you, that was exactly it. So I achieved the first goal fairly fast, and then we stretched it in order to allow us to buy more equipment. And that was 100% what we needed. And we essentially shouted out all day long about it. We went to every newspaper you can think of. We went to every Brilliant. person we could think of. We went to Time Out everywhere. And, um, and, and the incredible thing was we got the support and I think it was the community that happened um, there. Yeah, so it's just well, it sounded like it because I only looked the other day doing, you know, looking you up. So you must yeah. have done this very, very recently. <laughs> Could you just tell everybody what, would you, what was your experience like and would you recommend it to this community to do what you did? Yeah, 
I mean, I, if you have a goal in mind and you know you're not going to achieve it with the traditional high street banks, which is, let's face it, a thing that we probably all don't quite achieve, um, they're not exactly the most supportive. Um, so go to your community and tell them about what you're doing. Tell them what you are planning and be transparent about it. Be very transparent about it. I need to raise money and that's what it is. But I am also yeah. going to give you something for that. And you are going to invest in someone who is going to invest their time, effort and passion into your local community. And that's exactly what's happening. I've uh, created jobs for locals. Yes. And most of our- Because you've now uh, got, what, 15 people working for yeah, you? Yeah, probably part about time that. Full time? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, it, and you know, that's, I think that's what, what's um, going to sell you and your brand and, and your dream on Kickstarter is, is when you're real, when you have a video to say, hello, here I am. And yes. this is what I'm doing. And I'm very transparent about that. And if you have questions, please email me so I can give you a great answer. So that's this it. This is just brilliant. Listen, Sophia, we've got lots of questions coming, uh, yeah. lots of comments. Firstly saying, you're so inspiring. You're inspiring Thanks. so many people. You know, this is so what so beautiful about you. You're like, it's just you. And this is just what there. I'm trying to <laughs> encourage everyone to understand. If you're finding Sophia inspiring, she's just her and you're just you, and that is what is your USP. Uh, we've got viewers from all over the world today. We've got uh, Colombia, France, India, Beirut, Italy, Argentina, Lovely. Turkey, Slovakia, Australia, South Korea. So hello everybody all over the Hi. world. And, <laughs> and we've got Catch Jacoby 7 Hi, I can't wait to visit your shop when allowed and taste some of your delicious looking produce. Um, we've got Choose by Chani, um, you are correct. You must be there living your dream and meeting your customers who want to be part of it. And I yes. think that's a really lovely point, that's isn't it? That's the key point, I think. That is the key yeah. point. They want We've to got... be part of your experience. Yes, exactly. We've got Dotty Red Studio, such passion and dedication coming through. Um, Art Star London, yes to hyper local. And I yes. do think that I did a story on this yesterday. You know, that is what I think is going to happen. The unfortunate thing is, how do we break through? Because with every shop being owned by a separate landlord, with the, the, the council not really having their head screwed on to yeah. a future plan about hyperlocal, and what does that mean? It's going to be difficult. But you know what, Sophia? You doing what you're doing, me doing what I'm doing, maybe we can, you know, approach it in different yes. ways. Um, the green. The Green Door Project, constant uh, uh, adaption. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. The best yes. mindset for small business owners, actually any business owner. And, and yeah. it's true. We've got a question for you um, at your home, your world. You mentioned being the first in and the last out each day. I'm yeah. really struggling with the idea and taking a day off. How do you yeah. feel about it? Because also, before you answer that, Sophia, an interesting sexy stat, I call it. Yeah, go on. 73% um, of all small businesses have been reported to say that they will only take off five days this year. Yeah. I mean, seems that's... About, seems about right, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that so at your home, your world was asking you that question. So what do you feel about that? So, um, right. Before I opened, I was uncomfortable with the idea of doing exactly what I'm doing right now. And the thing is, once you start, you, you just have to do it. You can't stop. It just, it just happens naturally. But we did put a couple of measures in place to ensure we do get time at home with our toddler. Because that's really important. If we don't get time with our toddler, she will grow up not knowing exactly what's going on with her mum and dad. So I have put a few really important measures in place. And that's to protect myself and my family life. One is I don't open every day and that you need to calculate into your business, uh, all of your revenue streams and everything you do. Fascinating. You need to know that's it. So I'm not opening every day and that's to protect myself and my family. And I get the question every day from our customers. Why aren't you open seven days a week? I said, because I'm not a manufacturer and I don't have infinite time and staff. I have a life. I have a baby and you wouldn't want to work seven days a week too, would you? So that's yeah. one. <laughs> and the and that's it's it's honest but it's true 
and the other thing is um, I also protect my uh, afternoon. So I will split up with my husband and say, I'm going to pick up our child. If there's something left over, that's by now. So I've been doing the first in last out for the last nearly three months. Now I'm starting to be able to not do that anymore. So I go, I'm picking up our child at 4.30. Anything that's left over, you take over. So I have time with her. So Brilliant. it's all about finding the right mechanics that will help you cope in the right way and they will take time and, and that's very normal and it's um it's not even painful because you're on adrenaline for the first three months anyway so you're just <laughs> driven by it and you just keep going until that you couldn't off stop you fight. even if you tried yes, right exactly. it's, it's not I'll even a going. question but you know what I love about what you've just said there and community we do need to take a note of what Sophia is saying here it's such sound advice why do you need to open seven days a week as a baker. Would anyone else do it? What could you ask your business that same type of question? You know, if you're not finding, and by the way, that's why we're building good life companies, not SMEs, not entrepreneurs, we're not tech giants. You're building a good life company. So what is it that you're going to build in your life to protect the things that work for you and that are important to you and that you love so that you can also grow your business, but maybe, you don't start, you know, by doing something that you're never going to continue. You know, yeah. Sophia, you know, the fact is you've built almost your business model on the fact you're not open every day, yeah. which means that actually you haven't seen this sort of peak of being open for seven days and then shut it down. You yeah. know, it's a really good tip to say you've got to build in your good life into your business. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating. We've got Green Monkeys um, asking you a question. Do you think Kickstarters over angel investors? So, you know, did you have any situations, Sophia, where you just had some individuals who just wanted yeah. to give you money? Or do you think that it's actually better to spread it? Better to spread it and keep it with your community. Um, that's my personal opinion, though. That's not to yeah. say that for someone else, something else yeah. might work. But for me personally, I'm a huge believer in keeping my business to myself um, and not uh, basically trying to get someone else involved. Yeah. It's only because I've been hurt in the past, and that's all it is. So if I hadn't been hurt in the past, I may have gone for it this time. But I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of keeping mine to myself if that makes sense because then it's also yeah. me who has full control over the potential um revenue cuts that i may have to make or because of situations happening yeah. like covid yeah you know that there, yeah. there's always going to be something else so i think yeah that's why i, I keep it i keep it in the community and, and they, do they bear invest. Mind, green monkeys that kickstarter i'm right in saying this they're not taking a percentage you know kickstarter is that yeah. you kick start a business or that's an right. idea it's very different to maybe crowdfunding um, platforms where actually you are raising money and you are giving a percentage or angel investors who like Sophia is saying would definitely be taking a percentage of her company and yeah. potentially putting targets in place because of course they've given you some money and they're looking yeah. for that return. And the last thing you need is pressure when you're starting. You you just yeah. need to you need to keep it to yourself, and and I think it creates pressure when I mean with Kickstarter because obviously I do have we had six hundred backers in the end, so that's yes, six hundred people who who also are getting a reward for backing me, like a free loaf of bread or a tote bag or yeah. ten loaves of bread or in some cases even a hundred loaves of bread, and they yeah. will come in over time and over time, and they're your customers. So what yeah. you've done is you haven't just got a community that supported you, but you've cre you've created a customer yeah. base. Yeah, isn't it's that the amazing. greatest way to start? It's the most fantastic, cleverest thing because it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, your customers are your biggest marketing tool. Yes, you know, yes. Full stop. Word of mouth is still the number one marketing method. Yes, um, and as as you knew, they all came to your door. You only had one loaf of bread and then suddenly it went on a WhatsApp and you had a, a ton of people. <laughs> what is your one piece of advice that you had or your one thing that you've really learned through this year before I let you go? And because I'm taking away your precious baking time, but what's one, <laughs> one the overarching thing that you've learned so far this year, you would say? I, I'd say never give up. Never ever let anyone tell you that what you are doing isn't a good idea yeah. if you believe in the idea don't let anyone tell you otherwise because they will come to you they will try and beat you down and they will try and say oh but what if and haven't you thought about don't listen just do your thing 
Yeah. Don't listen to them at all. That's the one thing I've learned. And I actually have had the people telling me, you shouldn't be moving into this space. It's too small. You're not going to make enough money. I made twice what I thought I was going to make. So yeah. here I am. It's going to be Amazing. fine. It's amazing, and and I'm just thrilled to now know you. I as I follow, you've got so many followers, but follow Sophia, and best of luck for everything. And I cannot wait to see your journey because I've amazing. got a feeling with your passion and your attitude, <laughs> and the fact that you feel like you've swallowed so much wisdom, um, and yet this is your first year doing this. I think you're just going to fly, and it's just an honour to talk to you. So thank Fingers you crossed. so so much. Thank you. you. Lots of love. Cheers. Thank you. Thank bye bye. You. Cheers. Bye. bye. Um, I'll let Sophia go. And you know what a woman there that we've just seen. Someone so passionate in her first year. She's saying leap and the net will um, catch her. She's talking about get uncomfortable if you're comfortable. She's talking about the high street and using the ability to raise money through a platform like Kickstarter. And suddenly you've got all these people who are um, now customers of yours. And now this is smart. They're giving you money and they're becoming your marketing. This is what I absolutely love. And also this fact that she actually knew that she probably should have been doing this always. She went and kissed all the frogs of her different careers and then she's come back to be baking because her father was a baker. They took over the dining room. They became a, a, a baker um, with a tiny children, you know, tiny child. This is amazing. And as she says, you never give up. You never lose your passion. It's one of the things that I speak about a lot. And it's something that I've written in my book, um, Do What You Love, Love What You Do. For those of you who don't know, I've not, this is not actually the book. This is actually sewn by Emma Jackalone for me. Um, this is out on May the 6th. You can pre-order it right now. And I talk about 29,000 days on this planet and that you cannot waste a single day doing something that you don't love. And this is about building a business, doing what you love, and the new way of looking at business, the soulful way of looking at business, building a highly successful company, but with some of the massive lessons that I have learned. And um, I'm so proud of this. Out May the 6th, and you can pre-order now. But that's what I talk about, and Sophia certainly did that. She is not allowing a day to go by where she is not building what she loves serving a community that loves her and she knows it's not egotistical it is actually a fact she knows she's the duracell battery of her company she knows that what she gives her company is the usp and before she came on i was telling you all the same thing please look inside and understand what your usp is um and also think about being hyper local like my stories were saying is there a high street shop in your local community can you look at it as something that is your come together with other people starting a business? Look at this community right here, come together, join forces. Actually look at it as an online um, shop, potentially, the way you do all your packing and picking and all that sort of thing. But you have an HQ, you have this brand. It could be your YouTube backdrop. It could be your Instagram backdrop. It could be where you bring your brand to life. Landlords are needing people to take up spaces at the moment. You can negotiate, you can trial it, get them to give you six months as a trial basis and that you could walk away from it. There are so many things that we can do, but I really want you to have a look. Um, just the last few comments, Samphire Glass, such an amazing and inspiring person. I couldn't agree with you more. Sophia Jones Design, so inspiring. Thank you both. And Katie Bell Jewelry, extremely, a little of that, extremely inspiring. And thank you. And well, thank you, you community. I can see a lot of new faces coming on. Please do follow me on Instagram. Um, do have a look and do join this community. Remember, we've got an amazing Facebook community that you can join. I think with over 4,000 people now, the most warm and welcoming small business community there is. And thank you again, Del, for believing in this small business community, for believing in people like Sophia, giving her a platform, allowing this community and all of us to connect. And I would love you to join me next week. Remember, every Wednesday, 12 o'clock, I will be here for Holly's Business Pharmacy, Dr. Tucker, 
don't come to me with any proper illnesses, just business ailments, uh, illnesses, and I will give you a, a, an antidote. Um, and actually also, I will be revealing next week a little something that Dell are offering very soon um, next week. So do tune in as ever. I'll be on Instagram every single day on stories, answering your DMs. And But for now, on this Wednesday, happy Wednesday, happy first year for anyone who started a business. And congratulations, Sophia, on building something quite remarkable. You're truly inspiring. And so are all of you. Lots of love.